Y254 Imagine Welcome back, welcome back, back. This is still Why in the Morning. We appreciate your company and we are on the first conversation of the day where we are talking about digital media as a source of employment. And I'm joined by, uh, uh, you know, a special guest. I'm not sure how to introduce him. <laughs> this is uh, my former classmate and uh, he is a digital journalist. He's a podcaster and he's a voiceover artist. What a pleasure. Sakura. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. <laughs> classmate meet classmate on you TV. Know? <laughs> yes, this should trend. Classmate meets classmate. Classmate interviews classmate. Yeah. Do you have a classmate who is on TV? Well, I have. <laughs> Here she is. Well, you are a journalist. <laughs> you, yeah. you already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's yeah. glad to, I'm glad seeing you. Good to see you too. Uh, introduce yeah. yourself, please. I've just said Sako because I know you now. So okay. introduce yourself. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, so for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Brian Sako. Professionally, I'm a voiceover artist, just like she said, slash radio presenter, slash TV presenter, slash podcaster. But that's professionally who I am. But if you ask me who I am, literally, I'll say I'm a representation and yeah. a demonstration of God. <laughs> <laughs> ah, a representation and demonstration, demonstration of, of God. God. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, yeah. Shows humility. Yeah. yeah. So um, you, you do a lot of things. Absolutely. And uh, voiceover acting is one of them. Yeah. Before we get into you know, the story of digital media, you know, I want to touch a bit on voiceover, okay. voiceovers. So how, how is that? How, how, how do you do voiceovers? Does it pay, you know, speaking since today is all about entrepreneurship, does voiceover voice over pay absolutely it pays kwanza it's a it's a very massive field you know a lot of people might think ah kwani it's it's but it's different from like uh, film acting this one is where like you're mainly focusing on your voice mm -hmm. as a tool of trade <laughs> yep. your voice as a tool of trade this is where you're using your voice to earn a living mm -hmm. by reading and presenting different scripts for different products or brands out there, especially those that run on TV. I'm sure I'm sure you also have had at some point a voiceover of like almost half of everyone on TV or radio has mm -hmm. had at least a voiceover of either a project they did yeah. or an announcement they did or a PSA. But basically this one can go to a commercial place where you're able to earn a living. For example, if you're doing like for example, I'm doing a product about Stephanie. Let me see. Do Stephanie. one, do one on why morning. <laughs> I do one in the morning. Yes. Th <laughs> okay. Yeah, this one got me off guard. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for watching Y254 in the morning with Stephanie Ayeta. Mm, I think incredible. that sounds good. Yes, it does. Okay. So thank voiceover you. does pay. It pays a lot. It pays a lot it. depending on the organization. And uh, right now there are so many companies that train young journalists or upcoming journalists mm -hmm. on how to how do you focus your voice how do you bring out your voice and your personality at the same time mm -hmm. and there's people who are making it big shout out to you uh, let me mention him he's a former colleague i'm talam kosia i'm sure at some point you've come across him he's also like one of the main uh voiceover artists and the likes of johnson makazi the people we look up to in the yeah, industry the big, the big guys in the industry yeah, yeah. all right and you've also done uh news presenting yeah sure sure, sure. anchor wow yeah yeah so tell us about that before you yeah, get into digital the digital, the digital media space, what you do space. There? well uh it was a challenging experience a roller coaster at the same time but i love it uh you know you know one of those things that come unprepared because you know sometimes when god gives you grace mm -hmm. things just come to you your table yeah. and uh, you go with the flow so it was a nice experience it was a learning curve a news anchoring is not easy because being in the newsroom the newsroom politics and everything that comes with you know being on TV and the pressure sometimes it can be detrimental to your mental health so right. I think it's a field built for people built for it I yeah. feel built for people, people built, built for, for it. it. Yeah. And we'll have a conversation on this some other day, hopefully. Yeah. Now on digital media. So what do you do in this space? Well, uh, interesting. Uh, I, I think my first, 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 first uh, TV gig, 
I was uh, a digital producer and that was at every TV anyways, if I'm allowed to mention it. Okay. And uh, I think that's what built my forte. And I ended up like, I know at some point you watched some of my former, former, former YouTube videos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, that's, that's what put me into that avenue in that area. And so far I've been getting some few gigs here and there. Shout out to, I think last year that's when Amnesty International, in partnership with the University of Nairobi, they called me to moderate uh, their gender youth dialogue. Mm -hmm. And I loved it because of my online podcasting. So mm -hmm. it, it, I think it so has it opened, opened doors, doors for me. Uh, the online podcasting podcasting yeah so this is one of the things that uh, one of the ways or yeah. one of the platforms or you know that uh, youths can earn a money living. from uh, absolutely yeah. from the digital space yeah so tell us about tell us about you know the opportunities that are there in the digital space well there's a lot of opportunities you know uh, somebody will say ah nyumbani sina iphone almost you don't need even an iphone you don't need an iphone literally you mm. just need that cheapest android phone you know a lot of people will be like me i can't do blogging i mean, i can't do re i can't record videos because sina iphone you don't need an iphone all you have to do is go and find an affordable phone and uh, research research in an area that you want to start content because right about now is content creation it's mm -hmm. all about content creation yeah. everyone wants to be on youtube everyone wants to be on instagram people want to go live on facebook and do everything and go viral so mm -hmm. why not maximize on facebook and uh, you can do short videos and at, uh, after some time i think for youtube when you hit uh, when you hit 4000 uh, a 4000 watch time and maybe a thousand subs you're able to be monetized and on and earn some few cash. It's it's a good it's good money, guys. <laughs> you should be motivated right now. Ebu Ebu Anza go create YouTube good channel. Money. So the problem, good money, yeah. The problem is uh, there's money on YouTube once you yeah. get enough subscribers and uh, enough watch, watch time. time. Yeah. But the problem is usually getting the right content that will literally. attract. Yeah, literally. That will attract you know views. Yeah. So how does one go about that? So uh, like I mentioned, you need to research mm -hmm. on an area of your focus. Uh, you realize so many influencers like Nancy Moai, shout out to her, um, about what's her name? Uh, I think she's Elodie, she's a, f a former colleague somewhere. And uh, even the Kabiwa Jesus, you'll see they're vlogging about uh, different specific avenues of life. Si lazima ukuneshi kwa mansionet ama ukuneshi kwa bungalow somewhere. You can start at the Ushago where you're at. Show us your lifestyle. How, how is life at home? How is life in Ushago? See a must. Okay, TV kama Stephanie ndo utonyeshe. Hey guys, this is my studio. Yo. Start with what <laughs> you got <laughs> yeah. back at home. Yeah. So you can start with anything. Anything. But any co content is beautiful and amazing. Yeah. But people have had content. People have yeah. got content on the YouTube pl platforms. But starting is an, is a problem. Starting Actually, is a problem. starting is the main achievement. Just start. The Just rest start. will fall off. Yeah. But some are frustrated. They have started, but they're not getting enough audience for yeah. it. So how do you do this? Should you go and cloud chase? Because this is yeah. also one of the ways that people are also getting, getting the numbers, yeah. traffic. Yeah? yeah, You cloud chase or you put something. Um, I'm forgetting the name. Uh, okay. Where you say... Um, clickbait, I guess. Clickbait. Yeah. Clickbaiting, exactly. So yeah. you either use clickbait or you cloud chase. Okay. So are this... Uh, the right ways to do it or there's some right ways? I would say somehow ish it can be it can be it can be a way of getting the numbers because right about now everything dramatic attracts numbers. Literally if you're dramatic even on radio, on TV, people love humor. Nobody wants to listen to a boring person mm -hmm. on radio or TV. But when it comes to content creation, I'll say if you're objective and if your audience or your target audience is like a certain age group of people, maybe you're targeting people from the office or you're targeting, uh, you're targeting journalists or you're targeting mothers, mm -hmm. your content should be dramatic. It should appeal to them. So I think uh, the issue, the problem comes in when you're not consistent and you're not objective in your content. Like for example, mm -hmm. uh, Right now we are, we are talking about digital media, but then the, when the video is uploaded online, it, the caption is something else. That's not objective literally, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So being objective in your captioning and also like just appealing to your audience and the consistency should like be among the three factors to consider. Okay, yeah. so uh, I'm, I'm a bit confused because you've said that it's okay to be dramatic, but yeah. you're also supposed to be objective and uh, you're explaining objective to be something that resonates with your, with your audience. audience yeah. yeah. So how are you dramatic without, without uh, clout chasing, you know? Yeah. 
So do you, should you fake things to attract the audience? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, that's debatable and it's relative. Mm. But f I, I feel like in this content creation space, you have to go as far as you can go. If the clickbaiting way is going to bring you numbers, then why not do it? So you do clickbait? Personally, I haven't. I have a very clean CV out there. <laughs> I will not. Uh -huh. <laughs> but if you want to make it right now, you have to be, you have to have some sense of like dark humor or something. But Just be interesting. Mm -hmm. Be interesting. But literally. wouldn't you say that kills uh, journalism because journalism is all, yeah. all, all about being authentic, authentic being true. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you Objective, know, the digital media literally. is also, a f you know, a platform for journalists to coming on board, the yeah. content creators. Yeah. It's also a form of journalism. So would you say that sort of, um, you know, spoils it? Uh, I think that's what I'll have to say. I think there's a very huge uh, line between a journalist who has professionally learned the ethos or the ethics of a journalist. You've gone, like for you, you've been to university, you have trained for all those years, and then you have a TV gig. You definitely have a know how of what it entails to be a radio presenter or a news anchor. It's completely, there's a thin line between mm -hmm. being a YouTuber, a digital content creator and a professional journalist. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that also comes in with the issue of fake news. Yeah. Fake news mostly is propelled by people who do not know the ethics of mm -hmm. news because news is objective and news is authentic. News is true, it's true accounts of events. Mm -hmm. So it's super different from anyone can be a, a content creator online, but you're not a journalist. You've not been to a journalist, journalism school that is, or a journalism class. Mm -hmm. So there's a very huge difference between uh, being an authentic journalist and just a content. Some, and funny thing is that a lot of people, a lot of journalists colleagues say, ah, these people who create content, it's because they were humorous and they were hilarious. Mm -hmm. And I think that somehow has taken opportunities away from like trained and experienced journalists who have gone to school, have had the training, and just somebody who popped up an influencer with numbers on YouTube and some crazy videos and mm. they were given a radio show. So I think, I think that's also brings out that issue. But at the end of the day is you're a journalist, you know the ethics, you know the guidelines and you know what it takes to be mm. a, a professional journalist right. who doesn't propel fake news. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So uh, there's, a, there's a thin, thin line, line between, being between just a content creator and a professional journalist. Yeah. Okay. So being a content creator, you just go by your own rules. Definitely. It's, it's like self-employment, literally, like we are talking. You mm -hmm. know, uh, when you have good numbers on YouTube, Instagram, or all other social media platforms, you're literally your own boss. And that means you're able to dictate what you post. As compared to like for you working now on TV, you're following a rundown from your producer or your own rundown, literally. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's a very big difference okay. between... Uh, working for a company and mm -hmm. self-employment on YouTube or other social media. All right. And yeah. you introduced the, cons uh, the point of having a target audience. Yeah. So how do, you, how do you make sure that you define your target audience well enough to ensure that your content goes to the right people? Uh, I think that's where we talk about research. Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure when, when uh, producers, even TV producers or, or radio producers, when they're coming up with their show, one of the main, uh, one of the main uh, mm -hmm. items on the list is who are our listeners for this radio show? And who is the target audience for this television? Who are the people who watch such topics? Like even the topics you're watching right now mm -hmm. for this station. Who are mostly the people watching back at home? Are they youth aged between ages of 20 to 25 or 18 to 30? Mm -hmm. It's very important because when it comes to specific topics of discussion, the target audience is very essential. Now, when, when online, online when you're posting something, you don't know who will click on it. Mm -hmm. If your video goes viral, or if this interview goes viral, it definitely will fall into different many eyeballs who will be watching online. So I think uh, for you to determine your target audience, mm -hmm. you have to like run down to the comments and, and, and just look at the feedback. Mm -hmm. Feedback is very key, even on TV and radio. Mm -hmm. The people who give opinion and comments really matter a lot. Mm -hmm. So just look at the types of comments you get. Are they, okay. you can sift through if you're, if you're experienced enough, you are able to sift through and see. Like mm -hmm. this, this could be like teenagers, or these are just mature people, or maybe just fans. <laughs> all, all right, yeah. okay. So what are some of the,
current trends in social media that uh, one can use to earn a living? Uh, there are so many. Uh, right now there's blogging. A lot of people have, and you you realize we call it the gutter press, especially the mainstream blogs. Like I can't, I, let me not mention them. Free free advertising on TV, <laughs> like the gutter press. You know them. Those mm -hmm. blogs you go to to get those trendy and juicy stories. Mm -hmm. uh, blogs they write a lot of. I think they have embraced dark humor in writing. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Just a crazy caption, and everybody's clicking on it. Ah, uh -huh. Stefan Ayeta has done it. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Uh, so that's, that's among the biggest trend. And then podcasting. A lot of people now venturing into podcasts, recording podcasts. Nini, nini. I think we should do one. Sindo, a classmate interview class. I, I mean, podcast. why not? I mean, why not? You know? <laughs> we should do one. <laughs> so tell us about yeah. podcasting for someone who doesn't know about podcasting, maybe just hears it. Yeah, so uh, uh, if you want to be a podcaster or what podcasting entails it, just get a microphone, mm -hmm. get good camera, <laughs> mm -hmm. get good lighting and a good set and have a topic of discussion that is impactful or that will change people's lives back at home. That's basically it. Mm -hmm. Or if you have your phone, start, start, sit down somewhere with your family or whoever is around near you and start talking. Mm -hmm. Different somehow from blogging because for a podcast, yeah, you're able to, to get audio. Mm -hmm. You can get like mainly audio mostly or both. Mm -hmm. But now for like a video vlog or a video blog, you're getting video. That's why it's called a vlog. Mm -hmm. But podcast is specifically narrowing down to audio. To audio. Mm -hmm. But uh, you have the option. You have the to, option to of have also video uploading too. video. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So does, which one works better between uh, podcasting and, and vlogging? And vlogging. I say both of them are mainstream and both of them are love. But in, if, 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 if you're a good TV or radio producer, you know that people love videos. Mm -hmm. A lot of people would want to see a video of someone dancing. We want to see Stephanie, you know, talking on TV. We don't want to hear him. But I think that also denies the opportunity now for the, for the podcasting. And I think it goes back to radio. Mm -hmm. You'll be like, ah, who is this person? But you know, radio is a theater of the man. So it gives, you that, uh, it gives you that dilemma of imagining, hey, who is this person speaking? Mm -hmm. They really sound beautiful and warm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's like some of the dilemmas in between. Now, would you say that that's why now... Uh the radio have sort of moved to the digital space because now you know uh, the radio have uh, the different radio stations have yeah. their own pages where you can see what yeah, is going you can on watch in, who's the in the studio. studio yeah, because people love visuals. You know, visuals visuals are memorable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they they, they create uh, they have that like I said memorable. They have a lasting effect on the person mm -hmm. as compared to just like you know listening to. A, a sound that has no image. So I say v visuals are attractive and memorable and they create a lasting effect in people's minds. And that's why you realize mo at least mainstream stations right now, mm -hmm. they're streaming live their, their, uh, their shows, their radio shows. Even when I was at, let me not mention it, free advertising, <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were big on uh, videos. In as much as it's a radio show, but you, you're able to watch the presenters in the studio mm. and see them. As compared to Kitambo, you'll be like, hey, so who is this Stephanie yet? I've never yeah. seen her. I you have can't never. put the voice you can't, the uh, face. You can't move, yeah, literally. The face to the, the voice, face yes. to the voice, <laughs> literally. <laughs> yeah, so you've mentioned uh, blogging as one of the ways, uh, one of the platforms we can get, uh, yeah. m you can make money uh, using um, digital media. Yeah. You've also mentioned blogging. You mentioned blogging, Vl blogging, blogging slash podcasting. Blogging and podcasting. Mm -hmm. Are there yeah. any others? Of course, I'm sure as, as technology advances, you know, technology never ceases to surprise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All of a sudden, there was TikTok. Next yeah. time, there'll be another crazy app. So I think as time evolves, also technology changes. I'm sure, at a, was it China? There was a time I was reading an article where they, are, they were saying that mm -hmm. they don't want to have like human news anchors. They want robots mm. <laughs> to come in studio and present news. I'm like, well, like where asking. will the rest of us go to? <laughs> we need that check, man. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm sure as time goes by, many Thanks. other trends are going to come. So it's, okay. it's like, let's wait and see. So basically, this is all about content creation. Content creation, basically. Content creation. Yeah. And now, w what happens to that person who doesn't have the resources or maybe they're coming from the rural areas and... Okay. They have the potential. Okay. So what 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 do they do? You've mentioned that any phone is yeah, okay. and it, like don't you don't have to wait for an iPhone <laughs> like you Stephanie. have to wait for an iPhone, <laughs> but you need a don't you need a good phone? Yeah, I think for starters, you know, everybody starts somewhere, Steph. Mm -hmm. Even before you become a TV presenter, you are somewhere before. Yeah. So I, b I believe in the power of just starting. Start mm -hmm. to do with whatever you have. 
Uh, but you know, right now in this generation you are living in, at least mm -hmm. have have an Android phone. So I think that can be a little bit of an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, you you could be wishing and dying to be a YouTuber out there. You're in Ushago and whatnot. But all you need is a, a, I think find a way. I'm being zazi. I'm a self. Self will like to get pata. Uh -huh. And uh, buy yourself uh, a phone that's, a that's, that, that's audio, that it's audio compatible and video compatible. Because people want to hear clear audio mm -hmm. and, clear, and, and to see, watch clear video. So yeah. clear audio so and... At least, uh, at least those are uh, clear video. The main, yeah. All right. And what are some of the opportunities that this presents? Yeah. You've said, uh, of course, you're a broadcaster and you've yeah. had opportunities yeah. coming up from your space okay. in in the podcast yeah. so now what are th what are the opportunities presented by being a content creator oh absolutely there are so many opportunities L like right now there's a lot of uh influencers uh, pro product i'd say product influencing mm -hmm. like uh for example if you have if you have a good numbers or good followers or they call them eyeballs on youtube mm -hmm. you're able to uh, you'll find brands approaching you to give them shout outs in your it could be in your video uh, there's something called a uh, product. What is it called product promotion mm -hmm. or paid paid partnerships? You've seen you've seen you've watched a video on YouTube, even some TV shows on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You click on it and and a short ad plays, and then there's like a little disclaimer. Paid, uh, partner. paid partnership with Stephanie with Zakwa, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you're able to earn a living from you know brands that approach you to shout them out or talk about their products in your videos even on instagram a lot of people who have a uh, huge uh, instagram followers mm -hmm. uh, they they do something called insta stories or insta shoutouts there's people who charge a lot uh was it at gobari even uh, <laughs> the team master <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> shout out to him though uh he was doing a, i think he was doing well in that sector of like giving shout outs in insta stories for pay even if you want to get followers you want to gain maybe let's say five thousand followers mm -hmm. you can pay an influencer who has huge numbers and they give you a shout out in the instagram story and then you get the numbers and you're being paid the money. Imagine 5,000 bob to just write a caption. Hey, follow uh -huh. Stephanie Yeta. You're getting 5K for it. Mm -hmm. Is it not beautiful? It is, yeah. Okay. Ooh. And now uh, that brings me to the, quest to the question where uh, how much are you supposed to charge? Or, I, you know, being an influencer, some, t some influencers have yeah. complained that um, the brands that come to them sometimes underrate them and play them you know yeah. <laughs> so that sort of thing so how do you put yourself out there and just uh, brand yourself well enough i think uh, uh, the issue for authenticity comes in and uh, the issue of like uh what kind of brand for example if you're a person who I say also the issue of personality sorry um mm -hmm. if you're a person who's ratchet <laughs> If you if you're a ratchet personality online, mm. uh, I don't want to mention some of the ratchet brands, but you know I, I think ratchet is not the right word. If if you're a if you're a, a personality that represents um let's let's say freestyle, like you're just freestyle. Oh, let's say let's use that Gobare because he was all about you know gossip. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the people who approach you are almost the people who are who resonate with what you do. So if you have a good target audience if, uh, and your, 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 I'll say your topics of discussion or your, I'll say uh, your target audience is basically teenagers, then the products should be appealing to teenagers and the people who approach you should be able to pay for that product without like underpaying you, undervaluing you or ignoring you. Yeah, and okay, I think you uh, oh. that's when a memorandum of understanding should be signed. Because mm -hmm. uh, there's people who you've seen influencers say, "Oh, I did a I did a shout out for this product. They never paid me enough money, or they disappeared immediately. I mm -hmm. shouted them shouted them out on my Insta story." So always have a memorandum of understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even there's some TV shows before you you do them, you sign, "Hi, my name is Stephanie, mm -hmm. and I accept to be in this TV show." So that when you sue them next time, mm -hmm. there's proof, legal proof, that uh, that you accepted you an agreement to be in this you know setup. Okay. Yeah. And back to making money again. Um, on YouTube, you've said that YouTube uh, earns uh, influencers good money. Good money. But yeah. what are the met? Wh how, what does it look out for before they start paying you, and how much is paid by YouTube? Well, uh, I can't really, I can't really like approximate who, how many YouTubers or how much of vloggers make. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think depending on the the outreach, the audience outreach. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, the engagements, uh, the number of clicks and the number of watch time. Mm -hmm. I think uh, YouTube is able to do, I think there's a terminology for it and, and yeah, th there's an app, I think it's YT Creator for mm -hmm. YouTube. You're ab it's able to do the math and give you the number and finally the money. Mm -hmm. So it's literally YouTube doing that, but for you it's to just post content, but ensure that you post authentic content. Mm -hmm. So it's upon YouTube to decide. Mm -hmm. But I, in Kenya, in Kenya is not as big as being in states or outside countries, or let's say overseas, where like YouTube is big. Like somebody can start YouTube today. I've, I've, I've watched, uh, I'm friends with some people who are in states. You can, mm -hmm. somebody just started last year and they have half a million subscribers but you you've started like 2016 and you're not even at a thousand mm -hmm. so youtube I, in overseas is is really the thing is really the it girl as compared mm -hmm. to like here people are like ah, that's a youtube channel and you know sometimes there's that pressure of like yeah. keeping yeah keeping up with social media keeping up with tiktok coming back to facebook mm -hmm. coming back to twitter and then instagram it can be detrimental to your mental health mm -hmm. but striking a balance to do both of those can be really good for you. Might is. So, and see, stance. <laughs> stance. <laughs> and now, how, how is it different from TikTok? Because we have few influencers in Kenya being paid by TikTok. TikTok yeah. I think Aziad was the first one to start yeah, to being paid by, yeah. Yeah, by TikTok. Uh, I think TikTok Peer is, is like one of those platforms that just came out of the blues and it took over the digital space by storm. Uh, tick, I, I think tick, TikTok, uh, the advantage of TikTok is that it gives you that, uh, it, it has a time limit. So you can post anything crazy, funny, humorous and hilarious and it goes viral and you gain those numbers. As compared to like YouTube, mm -hmm. you have to have like a certain watch time. A certain, a cert I'll say for good videos, at least have five, five minutes, three to five minutes. Even when you check, uh, check out some of the best songs on YouTube that have gone viral, the time limit should be at least three minutes, three to five. But for TikTok, TikTok has at least 45 seconds. I think the longest should be a minute on TikTok, right? Uh -huh. I guess, I suppose. I think, I, be. I believe so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I suppose. Yeah. Okay, before we continue with uh, our discussion, uh, I want to take a look at some of the comments we have on social media. We asked a question today and uh, I'm about to read it to you just uh, just now. Uh, yeah, so we are discussing about how to make money in the digital space. And you can, you can share some of your thoughts on social media. The hashtag to use is why in the morning that is the hashtag to use. So talk to us. We'll be, we're, we'll be sampling your feedback later on in the show. So let's just continue with this particular conversation where Sakwa is telling us just how you can make money in the social platforms. Um, what are the platforms in which you can make money from? And Sakwa, now I want to ask you, you've said uh, YouTube, you can make money through YouTube. You can make money through Snapchat. You're being paid directly. What about Instagram and Facebook now? Yeah, uh, Insta Instagram, Instagram, I think Instagram was like one of the main, <laughs> you know, there's a main chick, housewife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Instagram was like the housewife. Uh, when Instagram came, you realize everybody wanted to uh, post at least a photo because uh, Instagram is mainly gallery. Instagram is, uh, is a gallery platform because mm -hmm. it, it's where you just post photos mainly and videos for keep or for watch. Mm -hmm. But you realize uh, for those that have massive numbers, Mm -hmm. that have massive numbers you're able you're able to be paid maybe per video or per shelter mm -hmm. and instagram enables you to like tag even uh tag the brand or tag the personality of the person mm -hmm. of the product you're influencing mm -hmm. so i think that's like one of the main unique features for instagram mm -hmm. you're able to mention the person and people are able to click on the on, on the video they're watching or on the photo mm -hmm. and still be able to reach out to the client directly in their mm -hmm. dm direct messaging them DMing them. DMing yeah. them. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, interesting there. So let me read some of the comments before we continue again. Okay. Nimezi Pata, I had a little problem getting to them. So the question we are asking you is, Mna cut off expenses Ghani during these hard times and why? So we, we while well, we're doing newspaper review with uh, Ram, we saw how many, how much Kenyans are cutting off their expenses just to survive amidst the tough economic times and uh, the price hikes. So that is the same question we're asking you. Mna cut off expenses Ghani during these hard times and why? I will just uh, sample two comments. 
uh, Zam Max Karis and I said my lunch ni show off. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the lunch I'm a cut off. And then uh, Samuel Oyugen Sama. Good morning streaming from Oyugis. Thank you for tuning in uh, to the show. Bazenga Pia Yambusho Anasema. Uh, he's locked in from Nax Vegas to collect Gotea Vicky Greg, uh, Trey Edu na Veroni Mawa Gotea, yes? Yeah, so back to our conversation today on digital media, how to make money on uh, the social media pla on the social media platform and the digital platform in totality. And now, uh, Sako, you've told us some of the platforms that we can make money from and how we can make money from them. But now, tell us about the effects of being in this space, you know, working as an influencer. What are some of the effects to you as a person? <laughs> you know, I remember, you made me remember something. There's a time uh, our lecturer, shout out to Hamada Mohati, she told us, if you want to be in this space, media, you have to have a thick skin. <laughs> mm -hmm. The first thing you have, you must have, is a thick skin. Because people give feedback. And like I said before, feedback is like one of the major, mm -hmm. like one of the major uh, expectations when you're yeah. creating content. Mm -hmm. Even for us on TV, you've just read feedback. So people can come at you sometimes, mm -hmm. guns blazing. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you have, to, you have to have a strong heart, a thick heart, ready, ready to be. Criticism is very important because people will give feedback depending on how they feel mm -hmm. they don't know you they've just landed at the product or they're watching a video mm -hmm. and they don't like you yeah. it's not a must everybody to like you there's people mm -hmm. can dislike you from the first impression so mm -hmm. don't be a people pleaser because people will criticize people will give feedback that sometimes you don't want to hear or you don't want to read or see so receive it with an open heart and say god bless you <laughs> god yeah. bless you for every feedback yeah so Oh, okay, and how do you protect your mental health? Because, you know, most influencers get attacked sometimes. Yeah. One small thing you do and everyone is on your case. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, you are not friends the previous yeah. minute, you know. Literally, so yeah. how, how does one deal with that? I think uh, if, you, if, if you're able to strike a balance between, like, differentiating what you do mm -hmm. and uh, what, what you do and who you are, uh, that can be... It, it can be a little bit difficult because when people are giving comments about how you look or about how you sound or about how you speak, maybe it's the problem is not even you or how you look. The problem is them and how they feel about you. So mm -hmm. I think uh, feedback sometimes can trigger. It can trigger uh, bad memories, especially if it's negative feedback. Mm -hmm. and, and, and like we said sometimes, you know, all kinds of feedback uh, are, are, are valuable. You just have to like sift through what you have to take and leave what you don't want to take. But if people are attacking you and you feel like it's, it's tampering with your mental health, sometimes it's cool to take breaks, mm -hmm. sit down, reevaluate, and rethink about yourself. But what people think about you is not who you are, unless they have sat down and had a conversation with you. So please do not take feedback mm -hmm. from the outside. Take feedback from your heart and your mind. Take feedback from your yeah. heart and your mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And what is the power that... Um, the social media holds in terms of uh, networking? Ah, th th that's an amazing question. Social media is like, I would say, social media is like the key to, uh, or the digital space is like the key to each and every opportunity right now. Mm -hmm. Even, uh, I remember when, uh, when, is it the US? There's, there's a time they were voting. They're voting and they wanted to like have a system where people should just vote at the comfort of their own homes. Mm -hmm. So I think social media or the digital space has given us that advantage. It's not a must, you know, you write a letter on a paper and drop it to, mm -hmm. or uh, an email on a paper and drop it to a HR company so that they hire you. You can type it on your phone, literally, mm -hmm. and send the application and be considered. You don't have to go to the airport to book an air ticket. You can do it at the comfort of your own home or your own time and space. So the power of social media or the digital space has given us that opportunity of accessing everywhere. You can literally right now tune mm -hmm. into a show in the States and uh, look at what's happening there, mm -hmm. just here on your mobile phone. Okay. You're able to read about something in a crazy country happening and mm -hmm. you could be in a different country. So that's, that's like one of the major, uh, mm -hmm. major uh, ways that social media, the digital space, you can access anything you want mm -hmm. or whoever. Read about the president, read about Stephanie, read about me. Mm. Whoever, even the producers of these shows, shout out to them at the gallery. Shout <laughs> <laughs> out. Okay, uh, and about LinkedIn, uh, this is also in the, the digital space and yeah. it is one powerful tool. So how can people tap into that? 
I think if you're a professional brand or uh, you're a person, especially people who want jobs or mm -hmm. you want to be in touch with the HR company, uh, like you mentioned, LinkedIn is one of the like the main major networking uh, social media apps. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do is like have your own short resume, resume slash CV, uh, uh, write it down, pin it on your bio and upload some of your works because I think by now LinkedIn has, a, has, has, has a button where you're able to even insert your number, your email address, the former companies you've worked for. It's mm -hmm. like a short CV. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> so, you're, yeah. you're saying uh, like it's mostly for those networking, looking for network, employment. Oh, yeah. But what about the content creators? Do they need to be on LinkedIn? Yes, you should be. You should be because uh, that's like one of the main platforms for networking. Mm -hmm. You're able to, if you're on LinkedIn and you're an influencer or a social media personality, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of brands which will be able to look to check you out. I think most serious brands, mm -hmm. the most serious brands are on LinkedIn. Okay. Yeah, most, most serious. Most <laughs> They're serious, serious and most, <laughs> most serious. Are on LinkedIn. Yes, are on LinkedIn. So you need to showcase what yeah, at you're At least doing. you need to be. Even me, I'm on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. And now uh, we are asking about, you know, how people are coping with the tough economic times yeah. and what they have to um, sacrifice, you know, yeah. to just to stay afloat. So what are some of the ways in digital media that, uh, especially approaching the electioneering period, that yeah. people can, you know, tap into and make money maybe? Um, I, th I think that's, that's an interesting question. You know, uh, like you mentioned, this are very harsh and... Uh, turbulent economic times we are uncertain you know in Kenya I don't know what just happens in this country whenever mm -hmm. there's an election there's usually just something crazy that happens and people are like your mm -hmm. heart is guarded you're praying oh god let it go well so I think preparing is preparing for the best like just mm -hmm. hope for the best because <laughs> being in this country is another job living in Kenya is a job in itself <laughs> You have to be prepared for anything. So prepare mm. yourself, prepare your, your mind, your mm. heart, because elections in this country are just like another catastrophe. So you never know what might happen. But, but we, of course, we, we are trusting prepared. and believing for the best. So just prepare. <laughs> prepare yeah. yourself out and stay mentally positive. Because even with the rise of suicides and mental health crazy, mental health complexities, you realize a lot of people are ending their lives like, was it yesterday I was, I, was, I was checking out in the news headlines, there's a father mm -hmm. who slaughtered the wife and committed suicide only just because of like home issues, including finances, putting food on, fu putting food on the table, like just small, small house issues mm -hmm. are causing people to end their lives. So, so people need hope out there. So please just stay positive minded just find someone who can give you inspiration or find god <laughs> god is the best <laughs> is the to best give you inspiration yeah oh, okay. just stay hopeful i'll mm -hmm. say that stay hopeful because it's unpredictable right now mm -hmm. the economy is crazy but we are unga, manze, unga you guys the government should at least work on that like you know i'm shocked i'm mm -hmm. surprised that unga the main step of ugali literally mm -hmm. the step of food for this country is like now the most expensive product like what what didn't they happen what, what's happening what's <laughs> what didn't they happen yeah. <laughs> yeah we are actually yeah. hoping that things yeah. will be better yeah, yeah. and we'll, of course we are praying for peace in our country, in our country and yeah yeah we, we we're all about peace and love yeah. so now um as we come to a close on this particular conversation how would you advise the youth you know to tap into this digital space and why would you advise them to tap into the digital space particularly yeah instead of like going to seek for a job <laughs> so i'll say um right now there's a there's a i'll say each year at least each year at least each, uni each university produces over 500 graduates who are who have degrees and most of them need jobs mm. and people need to pay bills and there, th there are so many things that you know you want to meet as a person who is from uni or university or college not a master's uni or tivat like we we call it so uh, finding something to just keep you busy as a youth is very key and one of the main things that can keep you busy is using the power of your cell phone to keep yourself busy by writing or by joining you know there's there's a there's a site called um well i don't want to give it a shout out for free on tv <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll, so I'll call it remote remote sites where you're able to join, work, and earn something without like going to a company, dropping your CV there, mm -hmm. and waiting for them to give you a call. So use the advantage of social media that you have. And the conversation was all about vlogging and content creation. Why not use your mobile phone to create content on YouTube and you'll be self-employed mm -hmm. as compared to like writing a CV, 
and dropping it to a company to and waiting for them to give you a call. So mm -hmm. ensure that you use the power of social media because right now you have everything you need at your disposal. So why not give it a shot? Mm -hmm. Why not? <laughs> why not give it a shot? Yeah, okay. why not give it a shot? And uh, why did why the digital space? Do you think this is the future? Or literally, literally mm -hmm. the digital space is the future of everything. Mm -hmm. Like we said, there's even some stations which shut down. Uh, I remember, I'll say like two of my previous employers, they shut down mm -hmm. to mainly focus on creating content for digital. Mm -hmm. They're no longer available on DSTV. Mm. or uh, other platforms that you know disseminate TV content. They mainly focused on digital platforms. So digital platforms is the, is the future of even this, this traditional media, what you're doing right now. Next time, maybe next year, <laughs> you'll be able to tune in and not find the signal for this station because they moved online. No, we are, we are actually on both. We are online. We are online. We are yeah, here. now that's yeah. the power so of it now. <laughs> that's <laughs> the power of it. We are not going anywhere. Yeah. 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 So yeah. now uh, we want to bring this to a close. Tell us where yeah. to find you. And of course, uh, do the voiceover thing that you did and okay. shout out why in the morning at 254. Okay. From 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. 7 to 10 a.m. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, you can find me on social media, but they also do emceeing and yeah. I also moderate events and shout out to, like mm -hmm. I mentioned before, Amnesty International Kenya in partnership with the University of Nairobi. They chose me to moderate one of their gigs last year. It was mainly about gender, gender youth dialogue for 2021 and it was crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was interesting, overwhelming, but I loved it and I know this year they'll still choose me. So uh, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. My Facebook is at Brian Sakwa, on Twitter is at Uncle Sakwa. On Facebook, uh, on Twitter is Brian Sakwa 101, but on, mm. Facebook, on Facebook is Brian Sakwa. My YouTube channel is Brian Sakwa Podcast. Or if you want to book me for events or give me voiceover gigs, you can find me on 0717-829-615. That's my m number and that's my WhatsApp number. So if you're finding me there, ensure, 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 ensure it's a gig or mm. you're booking me for something. 0717 eight two nine six one five and my email is sakobrand2 at gmail.com so you can send me all the gigs you've got okay. i'll be ready to come and do the magic all right you're about yeah. to get many calls I, well, I, <laughs> <laughs> maybe so yeah maybe, yeah. yeah so now do that thing do the thing as we, okay. count it, as we close it you said I, sh I should why in the morning running from 7 a.m till 10 a.m yeah Ensure that you watch Why in the Morning with Stephanie Ayeta from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. only right here mm -hmm. on Y254 TV. All right. That was amazing. Thank you, Sakwa. Thank you so we have had Brian Sakwa, who's a digital journalist, talking to us about uh, employment in digital media. I hope you have a take home from this. He said, basically, use what you have to uh, make it out there in the digital space. If you have an Android phone, well, that's all you need to start. All right. So let's take that short break and then we'll be back with more. Don't go anywhere.